Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at the tubular quad. So the tubular quad is a mini quad frame that I have designed and built from scratch without a CNC or anything like that. And I've been developing this design for over two years now. And if you didn't see the last video, I recommend you go watch that before you watch this video because in that video, I show the actual assembly of the frame itself and building it from just raw carbon tubes and carbon plate. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how I put the electronics in this thing and we're finally gonna fly this thing. So with that said, I'm gonna do a narrated time lapse and then we're gonna check out how this thing flies. Okay, so cutting off the GoPro mount, which will be reused, labeling all the receiver wires because the receiver is gonna be reused so I don't have to look up the pinout and I'm repairing an antenna that broke off of that receiver. So just soldering it back on. Now I'm desoldering all of the motor wires because the motors will also be reused. You can see that some of the motor mounts have actually broken off on that old quad, which that design flaw is addressed in the new quad, which you can see right here, taking it apart a little bit so that I can put the motors on. And you can see I'm using the hobby knife a little bit to cut away a little bit of the carbon toe that was intruding upon where the motor needs to mount. And you can also notice that I will tape up the ends of the motor wires so that they're easier to feed through the tubes and I can also keep track of which three wires go to each motor. And here I'm bending one of the motor bases back into shape because it got bent in a crash, I believe. And I actually ran into a problem here where I, was, I had the wrong bolt lengths for the motor screws. Uh, some of them were one millimeter too long and were poking into the motor windings and I didn't realize it. So at some point I had to go back and change some of the screw lengths. And you can see I also use Loctite on all the motors, and I also use soft mounting pads on all the motors. So now it looks like I have all of the motors on, and I'm just buttoning up that center section. And now moving on to the stack, reading the manual a little bit, trying to figure out all the pinouts and whatnot, and tinning all of the pads that I need. Now I'm mounting that old receiver and I solder the antenna onto the TBS Unify uh, just on the side of the connector to keep it from coming off. And I've also mounted that up and now mounting up all the antennas onto the two rear standoffs. Now I'm soldering up the capacitor onto the battery pads and now I'm making up my own battery connector. So the flight controller and ESC stack did come with its own connector but I'm doing my own so I can use 14 gauge wire instead of 12 gauge wire which is a little thinner so I save a little bit of weight and in this application uh, I really won't experience any losses because I'm not drawing much current. And I'm soldering up all of the motor wires and I do trim off the ends, strip them, tin them, and solder them. And I can do that because on this version, the motors are ever so slightly closer to the middle of the quad. Now I'm soldering up the power wires for the video transmitter, putting the flight controller on, mounting up the camera, which I put on upside down at first, so I had to flip it over. Then I have to figure out how all of the video and camera wires are going to be routed. So unfortunately this flight controller doesn't really have pads for all that stuff. So I have to solder everything to a connector that goes in the side, which to me is not ideal. I'd rather it just all be pads, but it all worked out fine in the end. So I'm just getting all those soldered up, heat shrinking everything soldering up the receiver wires. Now taking all the props off, 
making sure everything turns on and now I'm programming the camera trying to get rid of the camera's OSD so I can use the flight controller's OSD and then I hooked it up to Betaflight and you saw I just swapped one of the pairs of motor wires to change the direction of one of the motors putting the nylock screws on once again, I had a problem with the screws. Some of them were one millimeter too short, so I was checking all those screw lengths. Putting the battery pad on, which I use UmaGrip for. Battery strap on, top plate on, which I have to take off because I forgot to tighten the nylocks. Now the GoPro mount's going on. And now I'm replacing all of the motor nuts, the prop nuts, because the old ones were really beat up from crashing on asphalt. So props are on and it's done. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed that time lapse and that flight footage. If you can't tell from the flight footage, this thing flies amazing. It flies just as good as all the previous versions. So we're gonna go ahead and work from the outside in and just talk about the setup, especially the electronics. And hopefully you guys will pick up on some of the things that I look for when I'm picking out electronics. So first off uh, are actually these arm bumpers. So I designed these and printed these myself these are to prevent the arms from scooping up dirt and grass because they're hollow and also to kind of protect the tips of the arms. So 
All four of them in total weigh less than three grams, which I think is pretty light. So to me, it's worth the three grams to serve those purposes. Moving on in, we have the Emacs Avan long range six inch props. And I run these props, first of all, because I really love six inch. And these props in particular are pretty durable and have really good control feel. So they're really responsive, which I really like in my quads. I just want them to respond as well as they can. And in six inch, a lot of the props are really heavy and don't respond that well. But the way these are designed, they can spin up and down really fast. So they give you that really good control feel. Spinning those props are the Hyperlite 2207 and a half 1922 KV motors. And the reason why I picked these motors is because, first of all, with the relatively low KV, even for six inch, I get really good throttle resolution. So when I move the stick a little bit, the quad only moves a little bit versus if I used a really high KV, the quad would move a lot and then I wouldn't have very fine control. Also, these motors have a pretty large stator and that really helps spin the big six inch props up and down really fast, once again, for more control. And they're also really light for how big they are, just like most of the other Hyperlite motors. So lighter is better. Moving on in, I'm running the latest version of the Hobbywing X Rotor Stack. I ran the motors and the Hobbywing Stack in the previous build, but this stack is the latest version, which has most notably the BL Heli 32 ESCs that can run D-Shot 1200, uh, compared to the old board only ran up to D-Shot 600. So I've had no problems with the old board, no problems with the new board so far. I really think it's a quality stack, so that's why I just keep using it. It just works. Moving on to the front, I'm running a Foxier Aero Micro Pro. This is just a pretty good camera. The reason why I run this camera is just because it's a micro camera, and micro cameras are significantly lighter than like a full-size camera or a mini camera. So nothing too special about this camera. Uh, it just works and it's really light. Moving on to the back, we got a fat capacitor that came with the stack. And then below that is the TBS Unify Pro High Voltage. Something I didn't know about the high voltage is it's actually significantly larger than the five volt version. Um, so it actually barely fit in here, but I did get it to fit just fine. And the reason why I use the TBS Unify Pro is just because I've been using it from the very beginning. It's known to be a really high quality transmitter and it has a pretty high power output. The only problem with it is that the UFL connector is prone to coming off, like the antenna will just disconnect. So the remedy to that is you can just solder the side of the UFL connector to the side of the board and that really holds it in place really well. That connector is attached to the Lumineer Dum Dum. So I used to run a TBS Triumph, but that thing was really heavy. So that's why I run the little Dum Dum antenna. Um, it's just really light. So you may be noticing that a lot of these electronic choices are centered around weight. Moving down to the receiver, which is below the video transmitter. That is a Lemon RX Diversity Satellite. And the reason why I use the Lemon RX Diversity Satellite is because, first of all, it's diversity. So there's uh, two separate antennas that it can choose the best signal from. And in the past, I haven't really been that impressed with the quality and reception of actual name brand Spectrum receivers, but I've had great luck with these Lemon RX receivers. And actually until recently, Spectrum didn't even have a diversity satellite and Lemon RX did. Okay, so I think I've covered all the electronics in this thing. So let's actually talk about how much this thing weighs. So as you see it here with the GoPro mount, with the battery strap, with the arm bumpers, with everything, this thing weighs empty without the GoPro and battery, 345 grams, which I think is really good. Uh, so once you throw the GoPro and the China Hobby Line 4S battery on it, it weighs 632.5 grams, which I think is pretty good, especially considering that the GoPro 7 is a lot heavier than like a session. So if you threw a session on this thing, it would definitely weigh less than 600 grams, which is really good. So I'm really happy with the weight of this thing and how it turned out. 
So make sure that you guys check out the tubular quad playlist. There's a lot of great videos in there and you can really see how this thing has evolved over the years. And with that said, please like this video if you liked it and get subscribed to see more content like this in the future. Thanks for watching.